Hey guys, Ben here. MQTT and own tracks. It's a pain in the ass. Let's get started. So, if you've been around home automation before, you've probably heard of MQTT. MQTT is a very lightweight protocol that's designed for sending messages on unreliable networks. It's a home automation favorite because of its ease of use and its reliability. Now, full disclosure, MQTT is great and everybody should check it out. It's very useful for a lot of situations, like own tracks or DIY sensor nodes or things like that. My saltiness comes from the fact that a lot of the networks I use block the MQTT protocol. Now, before anybody says, well, why didn't you use a different port? Or why don't you use WebSockets? I did, and I have, and it works now, kind of. It is noisy here, y'all. I got cars and airplanes. The problem is, MQTT took me so blasted long to figure out, it's like, the child who killed my wife in childbirth and now I hate the child or something. Yeah. I don't think my experience is universal and I'm sure you'll probably have a better time with it. So, with that said, let's jump into this. First, let's talk about MQTT terms. A broker. A broker is an MQTT server that you connect to that facilitates the transfer of messages between devices. Subscribe. Devices that need to receive an MQTT message subscribe to a topic. A topic is an address that a message will be delivered to. Typically, a topic looks something like this. A subscriber can either subscribe to the full topic being sent or the root of that topic, and then that device will receive any messages that are addressed to a topic which contains that root. Publish. This is just another word for sending an MQTT message. All you do is specify the topic, the message, and the QoS level, and you're good to go. Message. This is just the thing that you're sending. QoS, quality of service. There are three QoS levels. Level zero is fire and forget. The publishing device will send the MQTT message and the receiver won't verify if it received that message or not. QoS one, this is fire and acknowledge. The publishing MQTT device will send a message and the device that receives it will send a message back that says, hey, I got your message. QoS one is useful to use if you're in a situation where you have to know the message is received, like, for an alarm system. And finally, Q of S, two. The publishing MQTT device will send a message once, and the device that receives it will send an acknowledgement message once. Q of S two is the slowest type of MQTT message, and in my experience, isn't used much. Is that enough terms for you? So now that we got that out of the way, how the heck do we use MQTT? Well, first, you have to choose a broker. For this, you have a lot of options. My three personal favorites are Cloud MQTT, Mosquito, and then HBMQTT. The latter two you can set up yourself on your Raspberry Pi. To keep this video from being hella long, I'm gonna focus on using CloudMQTT. It's pretty reliable and easy to get started with. I'm gonna put out other videos though for how to set up the other brokers, so stay tuned for that. To get started with CloudMQTT, open your browser and go to cloudmqtt.com. If you don't have an account yet, you can create one by clicking on Control Panel and then entering your email address. Once logged in, the first thing you'll need to do is to create a Cloud MQTT instance. Click the Create button on the right side. Give the instance any name that you'd like. For the data center, I use Amazon US East and the QtCat plan. Next, click the Details button. From here, you'll need to create a new account for each device that you want to access Cloud MQTT with. In my case, I'm going to be setting up own tracks to work with Home Assistant, so I'll need two users. The first is for my phone, and the second is for Home Assistant. Next, we'll need to create an access control level rule for each account. This specifies what topics the user has access to. You can do whatever you'd like here, but getting started, I would recommend just using a pound sign for the topic and allowing read and write access. This means that the user will be able to read and write to all topics in the Cloud MQTT instance. You'll need to repeat this for both users. And that's it, you're done. You can leave this window open because we'll be coming back to it later to make sure own tracks is working okay. Next, we'll set up own tracks. Click the hamburger button in the top left and then go to preferences. Then click connection Make sure that mode is set to MQTT private. Then go to host. In the host field, type the server information that's under instance info in the Cloud MQTT console. 
In the port field, type the port number that's under password and in instance info. Make sure that WebSockets is turned off, then click Accept. Under Identification, make sure that it's checked on. In the Username field, type the username you created in your CloudMQTT instance, and use the same password. The device ID can be anything you'd like. I typically just make it the same as the username. And the tracker ID can also be anything that you'd like. Then click Accept. Under Security, make sure TLS is turned off. You shouldn't need to change any of the default parameters. Once done, click the check mark. It should say Connected, and you're good to go. You can verify that OwnTrax is working by going back to the Cloud MQTT console and clicking on the WebSockets UI icon. If you go back to the front page of OwnTrax and click the Upload icon in the top right, it should upload your position, and it should show up in the WebSocket UI. And that's it. OwnTrax should be all set up. The last thing we'll need to do is set up Home Assistant to work with MQTT and OwnTrax. Navigate to the Home Assistant Components page and go to the MQTT component. Copy the example configuration and paste that into your Home Assistant configuration.yaml file. In the broker field, type the name of your cloud MQTT server. You can use the same port you use for own tracks. You can change the client ID to anything you'd like. You can keep 60 seconds as the default keep alive time. Change the username and password to whatever you created for Home Assistant in your Cloud MQTT instance. Next, you can remove the certificate and protocol fields. Now, MQTT should be set up, but there's one last thing we need to do. Go back to the Home Assistant Components page and search for own tracks. Copy the sample configuration. You can paste this anywhere into your Home Assistant configuration. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Home Assistant's going to take care of the rest. Last but not least, save your Home Assistant configuration and restart Home Assistant. And that's it. That's all it takes to set up Home Assistant with MQTT and own tracks. So, Hopefully, this video helps you get started with MQTT. It's really not too hard once you get used to the terms and how to work with it. And by the way, I am blown away that our channel is continuing to grow like this. Thanks so much to all the people who have shared their builds and left comments and suggestions. It's really amazing what some of you guys are doing. Thanks to all the engagement on this channel, I'm expanding my plans. Keep an eye out for some Z-Way videos soon, as well as more hardware and home assistant tutorials. I might even try to do some more lighthearted stuff, you know, to keep you guys entertained. So keep an eye out for all of that. Thanks again for all your engagement on this channel. As always, feel free to hit me up. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts or if there's anything that I can do to help. As always, happy automating. Cheers.